Lego Ideas user Let's Go achieved a victory in reaching 10,000 supporters on his Orient Express set on March 22nd, 2022. On October 25th, 2022, it was announced that his submission would be sold as a Lego Ideas set, much to the enjoyment of Lego train fans everywhere. The anticipation during 2023 was apparent, and much discussion regarding the upcoming train set was had. This is, after all, the first time a train of any kind has reached the 10,000 support milestone and has been chosen by release by LEGO. Certainly, this is a big moment for LEGO train fans. The anticipation compounded until October 11, 2023, when a digital catalog was leaked on LEGO's own website, which appeared to show the official catalog images of the set. Of course, this leak spread like wildfire, and was met with some of the harshest criticism that would put any LEGO Star Wars collector to shame. We have seen so many comments regarding this set and explaining that it wasn't what they wanted, or that it was less detailed than the Emerald Knight, or that it's far too gone from the original source material. Some of these criticisms are fair. The leaked images did show a set, specifically a locomotive, that was largely different from the source material. LEGO fans always forget the nuance of the LEGO train, which mostly explains the design choices LEGO seemed to have made here. Today we'll dive into the set itself, provide an honest and fair review of what we've seen so far, and discuss some of the criticism that this set has garnered. Buckle in, because this is going to be a long one. It's plain to see that this set, particularly the locomotive, is vastly different from the original idea submission. To give the designer credit, he produced a visually stunning design, which does represent a realistic French steam locomotive and a coach used on the Orient Express. Perhaps it's not an exact scale model, but a wonderful display piece of a famous train. But it's important to remember what was originally submitted, a display piece. The original design, as nice as it looks, has precisely no hope of ever turning a wheel on Lego track. The driving wheels are represented by wagon wheels, and the pilot wheels on the locomotive are wheels from the 12-volt train era and have been out of production since the 1980s. It's plain to see that LEGO was faced with a crossroads with where to take this set. Let's recall, at the time of the Orient Express announcement, LEGO was still coming off of the recent Ultimate Collector Series scale Hogwarts Express train, which had fans just as excited. Many fans, including myself, were disappointed to see that an overscaled, dust-gathering shelf queen was announced. Fans were disgusted that this train was meant for display purposes only. And I can completely understand why. Toy and model trains are typically meant to operate, and we know this channel doesn't care for shelf queens. Back to the Orient Express. LEGO was presented with a static train model, which looked quite cool, but did not run. It stands to reason that LEGO decided early on in the process to make this an operating train set. This was a good decision. I don't believe for a moment that LEGO was seriously considering another display train after the Hogwarts Express. Yes, it was a departure from the original design, but undoubtedly a justified decision. The set also features two coaches as opposed to one. This is also different from the original design, but interesting in that the designer of the set opted to only include one car to bring the part count below 3,000 pieces, 2,995 officially. LEGO's decision to offer a second wagon is also justified. I recall LEGO fans complaining, again, surprise surprise, about another recent Hogwarts Express which featured only one passenger car. Even going back to 2009 with the release of the Emerald Knight, we saw many fans upset with a single passenger car included as well. The decision to include a second car with the Orient Express is thus justified. And this second car is unique. We don't have two identical cars. We have two unique cars with unique build techniques and features. This is an absolute win, even if it is different from the source material. Now let's look at the locomotive. I think the biggest gripe people had with this set was the locomotive itself, being the most different from the original submission out of anything included in the set. Fans backed a model of an SNCF 231 K-Class Pacific, and were given a 460 that uses the same wheels we've seen since the Emerald Knight. Again, consider that LEGO was faced with a shelf queen or a running model. The result had to be different. LEGO will never sell the high-end models that we are accustomed to seeing from members of the LEGO train community. If you are hoping to hear otherwise, I'm not sorry to bear the bad news. LEGO trains are perpetually a niche to the company. 
High-end and highly detailed models are always cool, especially to the average consumer. But we must also remember that we train nerds are not the target audience. The average adult, who perhaps just wants to buy and build a LEGO train, is the target in this case. We're talking about someone who may have never assembled a train before, let alone a steam locomotive with working connecting rods and a motor and gears. This set must be designed so that this average person can assemble and enjoy the set. Speaking from experience, people don't like to build what they believe is too complicated. It will remain on a shelf, partially assembled for ages, and they'll be discouraged from purchasing another set in the future even if it is one that they are interested in. With all of this in mind, and considering that we only have a very first-hand look at this set, through a leak, mind you, I believe we're looking at a solid, operating, driver-powered, as in no train motor bogey, steam locomotive in an attractive dark blue color that does have legitimate thought and detail included. The curved corners on the cab and tender are a wonderful detail as opposed to what is normally just a hard 90 degree angle. The color is attractive and the stickers or printing accent the model in a very aesthetically pleasing way. Not to mention, but we have a detailed connecting rod piece in this set. This is a first for LEGO for quite a while, they are actually giving us a new train specific piece. I've heard this set described as lazy already. This set is not lazy, far from. I believe that this is a series of calculated decisions that, while they do depart from the original source material, deliver what should be a better set overall with the goal of operation in mind. That was written by Glenn Holland, one of the best LEGO train builders in the world. If you saw the $2,500 Brickmania Mohawk for sale a couple of years ago, that was his design from the ground up. He knows a thing or two about consumer expectations. I personally feel that the set is full of charm, and the locomotive does appear to be simple, yet it's functional. It's still too early to say, but I'll bet that that has the powered up option the same way the Crocodile set of 2020 was offered. I have to be honest, and say that I too was looking forward to that French Pacific, and hope that LEGO would create bigger drivers, double XL sized ones to what we figure to cater to the locomotive, but relying on custom parts for just one set is what nearly brought the company to ruins 25 years ago. They've made do with what they have, and we're happy about it. I'm sick of people acting like they can't modify it. It's Lego. It's what it's meant to do. I've seen people also point to another set on the market that fully realized what was proposed, but I think we've learned the lesson that alternative brick options usually fall short of expectations. It's not like I need to compare. Oh god, here we go again.